Somali literature refers to the literary tradition of the Somali people. It ranges from Islamic poetry and prose, produced by the region's scholars and the acts of centuries past to works of fiction from contemporary writers. Due to the Somali people's passionate love for and facility with poetry, Somalia has also been called by, among others, the Canadian novelist and scholar Margaret Lawrence, a nation of poets and a nation of bards. The 9th century British explorer Richard Francis Barton, who besides the Somali Peninsula, similarly recounts in his book First Footsteps in East Africa. According to Canadian novelist and scholar Margaret Lawrence, who originally coined the term Nation of Poets to describe the Somali Peninsula, the Gael clan would be as recognized experts in the composition of poetry by their fellow Somali contemporaneous. There is a crucial distinction between the different forms of Somali poetry. The forms differ by numbers of syllables in each verse of poem. Halal with 12 syllables Abai with 14 to 16 syllables Herar with 7 syllables Gifto with 7 syllables Hello with 10 syllables Hes Hola 4 to 5 syllables Hes Kayaret with six to eleven syllables, has cannot to six to nine syllables, has more six syllables, has carwuret eight syllables. Mohammed Abdullah Hassan observing that. Some say he was perilous and his noble lines are commonly quoted throughout the Somali Peninsula. Samatar concours with J. Spencer's trimming Ham's judgment that Muhammad Abdullah Hassan was a master of eloquence and excellent in the art of composing impromptu poems which so readily inspire and inflate the Somalis. Although Samatar descends on its impromptu nature. Elmi Bodahari differed from the poets of his generation in that he is with the popular theme of tribal war and begadans in Somali poetry. Instead, Wally focusing on love and composing all his poems for the woman he loved, Holan Abdullah, with what seems as highly unconventional and scandalous at the time. Ali Bu'ol was a famous Somali poet and military leader for the 19th century, renowned for his herars. Herars are mostly used to prize the horse, and the horse stood central in a Somali pastoral life as a means of transportation 
and walking war. Equestrial poems were the hip before the early 20th century, and many of the well known heraars we know today come from Ali Bugul. He coined the term Gugulwade, which Somalis still use up to this day and especially during Somali's revolution council years. As the Somali studies Doyen Said Sheikh Samatar explains, a Somali poet is expected to play a role in supporting his clan to, fe to defend their rights in clan disputes to defend their honor and prestige against the attacks of rival poets, to immortalize their fame and to act on the wall as a spokesman for them. In short, a traditional poem is a questionable verse composed to a specific end, with argumentative or persuasive elements and having an historical context. The veteran British anthropologist and Horde of Africa specialist Lewis recounts how in the latter days of the rule of General Mohammed Siad Barre, the political opposition often relief on oral poetry, either recorded on cassette tapes or broadcast through the Somali language service of the BBC to voice their dissent. When the British considered a clause in the Somali language service town for financial reasons, a delegation of prominent Somali leaders met with the British and argued that much as they appreciate the ambassadors personally, it would be better to close the British embassy rather than terminate the BBC broadcast. The form of Somali's verse is marked by Hikat or aline, alliterating and an unbrighting practice of matter. Belwo or Balwo was a form of Somali poetry that focuses on love and delivered in the 1920s and re reached its pinnacle during, during the 1940s, pioneered by Abdi Sinimo with early progenitors such as Almi Bogot Hari, influencing with Disney style. Wow. In Somali, Rokli translates to Miss Furniture at these poem, poems, often but not always dealt with heartbreak or longing. Abdi Sinimo had his track breakdown in a desert stretch in Akbal on route to Djibouti. with some well was taking a more explicit tone. Religious authorities will try to clamp down on Abdi and the new poetry that the Jod were all composing. However, this failed and the side wall song move east from Borama to Hargeisa where Radio Argeisa will give Belwo must appeal a more Somali joke and also incorporate critical news elements such as the Ode and Drum. Somali poets traditionally confusive of the wit and spirit of a woman and this new switch to the physical was a paradigm change. 
develop in a Hayesa and Mogadishu to be played on the radio stations. Her loy initially was a long series of a sort of These series were unrelated to one other, then chained after the composition and performed with the oud and drums. Abdullah Karse was the first to bring the oud to play alongside while reciting these poems and under him the Heloi world tradition to a series of relates verses forming one long continuous song. These modern patterns will go on to form the outburst of old and poetry in a single flowing composition that will see some of the greatest similarities such as Kumar Duhole, Mohammed Muke, Ahmed Naji, Mohammed Suleiman Tubek, exchange this Henry in subsequent decades. Ahmai is sometimes classified as a separate language from Afmaha or the ubiquitously known standard Somali. The Rahangwen clan are the predominant Mai speakers in Somalia. In southern Somalia, the poet and the sitter were generally one and the same. British ethnologist Virginia Lewin noted during her visit to Afkoye that poetry was to be conceived and recited simultaneously with no prior preparation. The poets Allahin relief of their wit and memory to construct beautiful poems and entertain the audience. The poem The Law then was not this law was performed by the Latin Lashim of Afgoye, Hirabe, Muse, Usman, and Abu Bakr Kaligoitov, alongside a few others. Addresses to the current leader of Afgoye, Sultan Ubuye, in 1989. It evocated the rich history of the Haldi and the past Sultanate and the Conthers, the community of Afoye Hath at the time. Somalis also have a rich oral tradition when it comes to ancient folk tales. Stories with were passed on from generation to generation. Many Somali folk tales of work and life are so old and ubiquitous the authorship in unknown. Tales such as the head hair, the cannibal woman were told to little, little children as a way to instill discipline in then since they dreaded the hair, hair was said to pay a visit at night to all those who had been naughty, called it the wise warrior. Is another popular Somali folk late with a positive message regarding Aguaralde warrior who avoids all forms of violence. For this abstinence, he is looked down upon by his peers. 
However, in the end, he manages to show that violence is no way to earn either respect or love. Lion's Tale is a popular children's book in the Somali diaspora, wherein two Somali immigrant children struggle to adapt to life in a new environment. They find themselves surrounded by friends that strike them as greedy, only to magically return to Astin Somali, where they live out all the popular Somali folk tales for themselves. A Lion's Tale has also recently been developed into a school play. Somali scholars have for centuries produced many notable samples of Islamic literature ranging from poetry to hadith. With the adoption in 1972 of the modified Latin script developed by the Somali linguist Shai Jama Ahmed as the nation standard orthography, numerous contemporary Somali authors have also released novels, some of which have gone on to receive worldwide acclaim. Of these modest writers, Nurdin Farah is probably the most celebrated. Books such as a From a Crooked Rib and Links are considered important literary, literary achievements. Works that have earned Farah, among other accolades, the 1998 no stand international prize for literature. His most famous novel, Maps, 1986, the first part of his Blue in the Sun trilogy is set during the Ogaden conflict of 1977 and employs second person narration for exploring questions of, of cultural identity in a post-independence world. Haram Mohammed Jama Aul is another prominent Somali writer who is perhaps best known for his Darwish era novel. Ignorance is the enemy of love. Mohammed Ibrahim Warsame Hadrawi is considered by many to the greatest living Somali poet. Some have compared him to Shakespeare and his work have been translated internationally. Christina Ali Farah is a famous Italo-Somali writer who was born in Italy to a Somali father and Italian mother. Farah grew up in Mogadiscio from 1976 to 1991. Her novel, novels and poetry have been published in various magazines in Italian and English, such as El Gili, Café, Crocevia, and in anthology Poesia della Migrazione in Italiano, Poetry of Migration in Italy, and a new mob, The Poetry of Migrant Writers in Italy. In 2006, Farah won the Italian National Literary Competition, Lingua Madre, Mother Tongue. She was also honored with the city of Torino at the International Torino Book Fire. In 2007, she published her first novel, Madre Piccola, Little Mother, based on her own experience 
living in Mogadishu. As of 2014, she writes some works in Somali language. The Islamic literature of Somali and Somalia dates back to the early 14th century, with Uthman bin Ali Thaylah producing Tabajin al Haqqaiq li Sraq. Kant's Al Daqaiq, one of the most referred books in the Hanafi school of Islam. Sajid Muhammad Abdullah Hassan, 1964-1921, the celebrated religious and nationalist leader, also left a considerable amount of manuscripts. One of the better known Samples of Somali Islamic literature is Mayamut al Mubaraka, a work written by Saiki Abdullah al Kalakoli and published in Cairo in 1918. Saik Abd al Rahman bin Ahmad al Saila also produces many Islamic oriented manuscripts. In the ninth century, in addition, poetry in the form of Qasidas was also popular among Somali Sayyids. The letter of no, of whom produced a thousand of such works, in praise of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This Qasida by Uwais al Barawi called the Hadijat al Anam illa Qabr al Nabi, guidance of humanity to the tomb of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, extols the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Somali society is synonymous with poetry and also has a long-lasting oratory tradition of internationally available publicity verse Arabic poetry has the oldest and most diverse corpus with greater Somali's proximity to the Middle East, similar attachment to poetry exists in Somali culture and traditions. Poetry has played an important role in Somali society since antiquity. Urban and rural poets memorized entire volumes of poems with some impending centuries. Notable Somali poets include Sajid Muhammad Abdullah Hassan and his contemporaneous, such as Ismail Mir. It also featured isolated generations poets like Muhammad Ibrahim Warsame, Abdullah Sultan Muhammad Timakade, and Abdul Khadir Hassi Sijad Yamyam. Maksame Khadi Ahmed. This is the list of Somali poets. Abdullahi Sudan Mohammed Timakade. Abdullah Hedada Mashidi. Jamiam Abdul Kadir Hersi Shijad Farah Hussein Sarmarke Haji Ali Majertain Hassan Sikh Mumim Kanam Ladan Osman Mohammed Ibrahim Warsame Besno As 
حضراوي محمد عبد الله حسان محمود سياد توقان محمد غاجايد نورودين فرح سعيد صلاة أحمد شادية ياسين شائق صوفي ورسام شاين أوالي ورسام شيري أن يام يام